Welcome to the Council of Women. I'm Debbie Frazier. I hope you've been enjoying our special series with different guests as we give Anne Trillian and Teresa a break for the next few months. Today, my guest is Ginger Stocky. Ginger is an Emmy award-winning writer, producer, and talk show host who says she is as comfortable in the African bush as she is on a talk show set. Now, I would say that my African adventure many years ago was in some ways easier than some talk show situations, <laughs> but I want to welcome Ginger and explain that one to me. Uh, well, thank you so much. It is an honor to be here. You understand how it is, right? Um, when you do something most often it, it has to become comfortable or else uh, you need to be doing something else after a while. Right. right. <laughs> so I, I do love, I've had the most amazing opportunities um, throughout my career in television, both with Joyce Meyer and doing other things that um, I've been able to travel to many, many different countries, meet so many fabulous, just beautiful people and experience a lot of different things. So you get used to being on television, you get used to being sleeping in a tent or a hut or a nice hotel room. And, and I think that's what the adventure of life is all about, is that wherever God takes us, yes. he loves to show us new ways to enjoy our lives and new ways that he wants to display his wonder. And that's one of those things that I'm just very grateful for. I've been able to experience. Well, let me catch our audience up. Uh, you are also the chief creative officer at Joyce Meyer Ministries, and you can be seen on Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and on Enjoying Everyday Life with Joyce Meyer, which is on TLN weekdays at 7 a.m. I want to make sure I point that out. Ginger, you've also written the book Chasing Wonder. I love the quote from Helen Keller at the beginning of your book. Life is either a great adventure or nothing at all. And on this program, we start off with that story. So tell us about one of your most fun adventures. <laughs> I love telling this story because it's one of the adventures that didn't make sense as it was happening. It's one of those things that you're like, I don't know what this is all about, but I learned a great lesson from it. We were traveling for Joyce Meyer Ministries and we were doing some mission work and sharing the word in Papua New Guinea. So um, while we were there, we decided we were invited to this very tiny village, which is always an honor when people want to share their world with you. So we were invited to this tiny village in the highlands, way up in the mountains in Papua New Guinea. And we were flying a tiny little plane and we're going along the edge of the mountains. And the first thing is you think there is not an airport anywhere near here. I have no idea where we're going to land this thing. And so we're looking out the window and then somebody spots it. And down there is this tiny little grass runway carved into the side of the mountain. And you think, uh-uh, <laughs> that is not going to do it. But we, we made it. We landed on this tiny runway, stopped really quickly, bounced along and, and, it really was amazing. So we get out and these wonderful people greet us. They're so colorful. They're dressed in their very, very best, you know, um, flowers and greenery and paint. And they were just a lovely people, great big smiles. And they asked us to come to their place of meeting. So as we were walking there, it was all of us, uh, Joyce and Dave Meyer were with us as well. All of a sudden we heard this whooping and hollering and like war cries coming toward us. And we looked up and we saw all of these men running toward us with weapons, spears raised over their heads and hollering and coming right at us. And it, at first you're like, oh my goodness, what is happening? And, you know, we all reacted a little bit differently. Some people are are uh, very concerned for Joyce, of course, what's right. going on here. Um, but I just remember watching this and thinking, what on earth? And then they, they ran past us with these fierce faces. They ran right past us and their spears are still raised. And the entire crowd, all the people in this tiny village went, yay. And they were just so excited. And that was their welcome to us. So while, you know, we weren't sure if we were going to survive the event or not, <laughs> this village was giving us a wonderful wow. gift. 
they understood that people want adventure, that they want unique experiences in their life. And they gave us one that I will never forget one of my favorites. And it really taught me that one way to make people, um, feel welcome and to really understand the amazing things that happen in our world that are not like us. We need to see how different we all are. So it, it really taught me that living a life of adventure is about seeing how everybody else lives, having an open heart to the wonder that God puts around us. Is that what you mean by adventure mentality? Very much so. Yes. Yeah. So I've learned that life is so much better when we live with a mindset, um, a continual mentality that every day, whatever it brings, brings with it possibilities, opportunities for an adventure, for a sight to behold, for something beautiful, for a lesson to be learned. And all of those things are from the hand of God. That's the most important thing. You know, we can have empty adventures and those don't do that much for us. We'll just be searching for the next thing. But when we live with the end, adventure mentality that God has good things for us every day, whether it's a tiny thing like the smile of a child that brightens your day or a little flower out in your garden, or it's something big like a tribesman running at you with a spear. I don't know, whatever it may be, but it's living with that attitude that God, whatever you have for me, I want to chase after it. And you do use that term chase wonder. Uh, do you think that some people choose to sit on the sidelines in life? Mm, that is such an interesting question. I, I don't think anybody wants to sit on the sidelines of life, but I think it happens to us so easily. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that take our world and shift it in a way that maybe we never saw it going. And that happens to all of us or take those things that we thought were um, dreams or goals and, and change it for us. And we get sidelined that way. I don't believe that God ever wants us to stay on the sidelines. And so that's one of my hopes through sharing so much of this is that my biggest desire is that God will inspire and encourage people that he has wonderful things for them, even if they feel stuck somewhere right now, and to give some practical steps on how to move toward that. And it could be that some people need more adventure and others need less, but finding that balance either way is okay. Yeah. And what I think is interesting about that, um, the way I explain it is that we do all need adventure, but adventure is very different for each person. So when you look at what God has for each one of us, it's very specific. I love that about God, that he knows our hearts. He created us to be the way that we are. Therefore, he has created the perfect adventures, the perfect wonder to shower on each one of us. So yeah, one person might not need a lot of big experiences, but they might need a lot of quiet times with God. That is an adventure. Another person might need some, some different types of excitement, but God knows each one of our hearts. And when we're seeking him first, then I think we all get exactly what we need there. Well, I want to ask you to pray now for women watching who want to live an abundant life. Now, Jesus talked about that. And I know one of your favorite scriptures is John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. And I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Um, but, you know, for those that feel bored or weighed down by all of life's challenges, you know, Jesus makes a difference. Would you pray? Absolutely. I'd love to. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for our friends right now who are asking these questions, who are searching their hearts and who want more of you. God, I pray that you reveal yourself to them in powerful ways, that your love becomes so real and so abundant that 
the wonderful things that you have for them in everyday life, just light up and draw their attention. And I pray that all of the hindrances and all of the things that have gotten in the way of the joy and the love in their life become stripped away by what you bring in Jesus name. I thank you for the joy and the adventure and the wonder that you are going to bring to our friends right now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Ginger, you live a busy life. And among the other things we talked about, you're a wife, mother, and grandmother. Um, but still, you find time to look for beauty in all the things uh, around you and to find joy in each day. Share with us now about God's wonder and how we can embrace it in our own lives. I would be happy to. I think there are so many things that we have allowed to change our outlook on life. You know, this has been a very difficult stretch for most of us. The pandemic, um, we've had loss, we've had heartbreak. Um, many people are dealing with new fears and anxieties. My question for you is, what have you given up? It's an important question. I really want you to answer this for yourself because some of the answers are obvious. Maybe time with family, maybe connection with other people, um, travel, which has been really hard for me. Um, some of the freedoms that we've all had to give up during this time of pandemic. Um, but there are really deeper things that I want to ask you to think about. What are some of the other things that you have maybe let go of or, or given up against your will or not? What about your dreams for your life? What about the imagination? What about the expectation of good? Have you let some of those things go? I believe most of us have, and here's the big one, and that's hope. Have you given up hope for new things, for wonderful things in your life? Even just a little bit. And I want to encourage all of you in that now, because through this time of pandemic, or maybe through all of the other things that happen uh, throughout our life, whether it's heartache, pain, disappointment, it squeezes down on us and life can become smaller and smaller and smaller and more compressed. As a journalist, I really believe in the power of story. I believe in the power of your story because I have seen the change that story can make in someone's life. I have seen the importance of it. And we often hear about the fact that you are always writing your own story. And that's a lovely thought, but let's get really practical, okay? If you really look at it, more often we are allowing life and its circumstances to write our story for us. Therefore, we're missing so much of the wonder that God has in place for us. Wonder is just the hand of God moving in our world. And it might be something miraculous that you see that blows your mind, or it might be something little that encourages you and shows you his love. We don't want to miss those things. And if you've given up on hope, and if your life has gotten smaller in that tiny box, God says this to you. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans for hope, and a future. This is another verse that I love so much. It, this is Psalm 37, 23 and 24. And it says, the steps of a man are established by the Lord. When he delights in his way, though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong. The Lord upholds his hand. Don't you love that? We all fall. It doesn't say you won't fall if you do this. It says, though you fall, God will hold on to you. But the key is what it says when he delights in God's way. When we delight in the Lord, these things happen for us. And delighting in God is living with a life of gratitude, being thankful for the wonder that he puts around us, living life with open eyes that take these things in. So I don't want you to think about writing your story. I'm a writer and that seems like a lot of work even to me. So instead, let's focus on delighting in the Lord. Let's change that mindset to see this life as an ongoing adventure, seeking out all that God has for you and allowing God to write those pages. It is such a beautiful way to look at it. And it takes some pressure off because you see, 
there are wonders that God has for you. Adventures that he has specifically designed for you. He knows how you're made. He made you. He knows our fears. He knows our desires. He knows our seeming limitations. And when we understand that this life of wonder is specific for you, that frees us from a huge downfall in life. And that is comparison. Do you ever deal with comparison? I don't know anyone who doesn't. So I, I know I certainly do. Don't compare yourself because your adventures are not mine. They're not your mom's or that person that you follow on social media whose life looks perfect, but you're own, only seeing little glimpses. Um, I work alongside my boss and friend and mentor, Joyce Meyer, and um if you can even imagine, if I were to compare myself to her all the time, it would be so very limiting. There's no comparison. I'm not meant to be Joyce. I'm not meant to be anybody else. I'm meant to do what God is calling me to do, to live the adventures he has for me. You know, here on the Council of Women, there are so many fabulous experts on the program. And I'm not going to compare myself to them either. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a theologian, but I would love to offer you the counsel of a friend, a friend who is an expert in the importance of exploring your dreams, opening your world to creativity and wonder and what they bring to our lives, because those things are gifts from the greatest creator of all. He has no limitations. So I'm here to encourage you to break out of that tiny box that life has been putting you in. And this is why God cannot be contained by our small view of the world. And despite your circumstances, despite my circumstances, he has big plans for us. And like we were talking about John 10, 10, you deserve adventure. God wants you to live this life that you love. And one day we'll be with him and it will be the greatest adventure of all. But the problem right now is here on this earth, we are so trapped by the demands of life, responsibilities, our schedules, our past, our hurts, our failures, our diminished expectations. But God, who we said is the creator of all, is not stifled by any of those things, not by the pandemic, not by the actions of others or the limitations we put on ourselves. When we see limitations, God sees opportunities. And that's what he's seeing for you right now. So we have to break out of that mindset that says, I don't have time. I don't expect I don't deserve. It's time to recapture our sense of wonder in God. It's time to believe again that he has these good things for us to chase after God's wonder. So we need to purposefully step out of the mundane, step out of the routine now and then to chase after all the beauty and the love and the joy that God has for us. Um, I'm a very goal oriented person. I've been working in television all my life. So, um, you know, it's fast paced. There are a lot of deadlines. There's a lot of travel, a lot of goals that I want to obtain. But when uh, our daughters were small, we have two daughters. I remember God very clearly laying on my heart during that time to seek what will matter most in the long run. That's so important for each one of us right now. So, of course, I asked God, Okay, what is that? What do you want me to seek? And I felt impressed on my heart that he was saying to make time for him and to create memories that I will cherish, that my family will cherish for a long time and to notice and remember the wonder that God puts around us. As a mom with small children and a career that I loved, I made that conscious effort to balance my life the very best that I could. It's not easy, but with God's help, all things are possible to put God, family, and career in, in those priorities. And as a mother, I remember marveling at the scripture, Luke 2, 19. Um, this is about Mary when Jesus was a child. And she said that she would treasure all these things that she was seeing up in her heart. She pondered them in her heart. She made them into memories. She was noticing the wonder that God put in her life. 
So you got to break out of that mindset that one, that wonder, adventure, and joy are too extra- extravagant, or maybe you're thinking they're too much to ask for you. Um, it's time to discover adventures of courage, adventures of compassion, of loving people, and of creativity. Um, I, there's another verse I love in Luke chapter five and Jesus and his disciples were getting to know each other and walking around and Jesus was beginning to do miracles and the disciples were amazed. And they said, uh, this verse says amazement sees them all and they glorified God and were filled with awe saying, we have seen extraordinary things today. I am still walking with God. You are still walking with God on this earth every single day. So I want that to be my, my claim. Um, I, I want to say, I have seen extraordinary things today because God is active and he's here and he's doing this and he's doing it for you. So here's a couple things I want to encourage you to do. Make a decision to develop that adventure mentality that we talked about. Give yourself permission to chase after this wonder. Stop thinking that it has to be just the big moments. Search for those little everyday moments that God wants us to relish in and to push back about against the obstacles that are keeping us all from wonder and joy in our lives. Allow fear to turn into trust. When you begin trusting God, he will show you how trustworthy he is. Allow complaining to turn into gratitude, and that will change your perspective so much and just increase the wonder in your life. People pleasing? How many of us are people pleasers? Instead, shift toward the freedom of giving God the glory, no matter what people think of us. It is not an easy shift, but I'll tell you, I've been working on it for a long time. I still work on it every day. You can work on it too. And pride, pride is such a big thing in all of our lives. Turning that into humility and vulnerability, letting people say, see our faults. So This wonder that you are going to find, these adventures that God will lead you on are specifically chosen for you. They fit you perfectly. God knows you and he knows your needs. And when you taste some of this wonder, you will desire more and more. Give God the chance today. Remember Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will place in your heart those things that line up with his word. So that's my prayer for everyone today. And I pray that you find so much of God's wonder in your life. Well, you shared so many wonderful things today. You know, I was thinking that for some folks, it does feel like a tiny box. You know, there's so much discouragement and anxiety that we've experienced in this past year and a half or so. And then for others, it's it's the, I don't deserve it. I'm not Mm -hmm. worthy. And you reminded me, that God is limitless. The limits that we set upon him are the limits we set upon him. God himself is limitless. And that you invited us to seek adventure and to chase that wonder. Another point that really stood out to me is, you know, who's writing your story? Is life writing your story? You know, um, I don't like the idea that life is writing my story. You know, um, you said to delight in the Lord because he will write your story. And I began to think about that. Yes, every chapter, it doesn't matter where he begins in the book, but he (laughs) will write every chapter, every page, every sentence, if we allow it. Seek what will matter the most and leave it up to God. And that's what, and I'm going to ask you to pray um, for those, you know, struggling with some of those, but maybe you have another thought on that, but just visualizing that no matter what chapter he picks up on in our life, he begins writing immediately to the very end of the book. 
No, you're absolutely right. We're all at such different phases in our life. And sometimes we feel like um, we're in this beginning phase where we don't know where God wants to take us. He's already working on that story for them right now. We get that, that time in our life where we're so busy, where we're just trying to keep our head above water, whether it's as a, as a mom or whatever is in our life. And he's helping us through those situations. He's walking with us through that. And then sometimes later in life, we think it's too late for me. I missed it. And that is never the case. So can I pray for each one of yes. those people right now? Yes. God, in Jesus name, I thank you for all of the phases, all of the stages in life that you bring us through, that you never just stand back with your hands and say, okay, you're on your own right now, that you are always walking with us correcting our path if we allow it, that you are always showing us your ways and you have a good plan for each day of our lives. Oh, Father, I thank you that every moment you are with us, that you do not leave us or forsake us. Yeah. Even if we feel like we've made too many mistakes, we've made too many wrong turns. Um, you're always here saying, come back to me. So I thank you that today you're pulling us all back to the story that you're writing for us. And we give you permission and we ask you to lead us today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Ginger, thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate that. It has been my privilege. Thank you so much. I love sharing this with everyone. And remember, our God is limitless, and he's waiting right there to write the rest of your story with you. So if you'd like to watch this program or other TLN programs, go to YouTube and search under the Total Living Network. Also, call us anytime for prayer. If you get a voicemail, we will call you back. Your Heavenly Father loves you just as you are, and he has a plan designed especially for each of us. The beauty is in finding out exactly what that is for you. Ginger, one last word before we close. I would love to encourage each person right now who maybe has a little bit of discouragement going on in your life, that if you give God the slightest sliver of opportunity, mm -hmm. that he will break open some wonderful things in your life, that he is there. And if you give him the opportunity, let me even say, if, if you just give him the slightest open door, he will begin to throw that door open and show you wonder and love and joy in your life. Like you've never seen before. And, and this is not to say life is not hard. It is, but God understands that. And he's there in the midst of those pains too. And that's some of the greatest wonder that I've ever seen. So that's my prayer for everyone. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. It's really been fun and a privilege. And again, get your copy of Ginger's book, Chasing Wonder. It's available wherever you buy your books. And also watch Ginger on Enjoying Everyday Life with Joyce Meyer, which is on TLN weekdays at 7 a.m. Thanks for watching the Council of Women. God bless you. Join us again next week.